Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss my results in this part 2 video about bacteria in the reef tank. As this is a part 2, I recommend going back and watching my initial video from a month or so ago. Uh, I'll link to that here. As a quick refresher, I decided to run a full course of the Aquarium Systems Color Up program. This program was super easy and simple to follow. Essentially, you use this kit that includes 15 vials of pre-prepared strains of various live bacteria. Each vial is labelled with a day on it, and you pour the appropriate vial into your tank every day. The vials look like this. You twist the top off and pour it into your tank, and that's all you do, once a day, every day. This vial is day 15, uh, which would be the last vial, and they're labelled 1 through 15. I wanted to evaluate the use of bacteria across three metrics, colour, polyp extension and growth. While colour and polyp extension are fairly unscientific and fairly subjective, growth on the other hand is much easier to show and document through rigorous water testing with regard to the consumption of elements like alkalinity. Before I go into the results, please bear in mind that I'm no scientist and I am limited by performing these tests on a single tank. There are many uncontrolled factors, but I have done my best to show some results which, if nothing else, can add to the pool of slightly better than anecdotal evidence, uh, which is unfortunately very common within the hobby. That said, let's get into it. First up is colour, and I can't say that I've noticed any colour changes in my tank. Although I suspect I have achieved most of what is possible to achieve from the corals that I already have, through the use of high quality Kessel lighting, supplemented with T5s, coral food, amino products such as those that I've previously reviewed by Coral Essentials, Aquaforest and Reef Anabolics, and the long term acclimation of the corals in my tank which is now approaching 2 years old. Given all that, I'm just not sure there is much more colour to be had out of the corals I have. So all I can say with regard to colour is everything looked great before their experiment and everything still looks great after the experiment. Okay, polyp extension. Before the experiment, I thought I had pretty good polyp extension on my SBS. However, within the first week of the experiment, I noticed a couple of notable changes in my tank. Specifically, on Acropora, like my large strawberry shortcake colony. It went from what I would describe as fuzzy to now being downright shaggy. All the Pacillopora, Seriotopora and Digitata in my tank have also shown minor increases in polyp extension too. They were pretty furry beforehand, but subjectively I think their, their polyps are even denser and thicker now than they were before the experiment. Again, I need to stress this is subjective, but I will leave you with some footage you can review, see if these look like good results to you, and compare them with some of the B-roll footage from my older videos, and come to your own conclusions. Now, let's look at growth. Visually to me, my corals, particularly SBS, are growing faster than they ever have before. But more importantly, I can prove it as we look at my alkalinity consumption and dosing. I've had my KH lab testing my alkalinity six times a day over the entirety of the program. Additionally, it intelligently controls my dosing, automatically increasing the dose as my alkalinity drops below a range or decreasing it if it rises above a range. For me, that range is set to 7.5 dKH at the low end, 8 dKH at the high end, with a target alkalinity of 7.8 dKH. So let me talk you through the results I saw. As you can see from the white line on this chart, over the period of the program, my tank's alkalinity has remained relatively stable. I saw a minimum of 7.25 and a maximum of 8.3 dKH. So a maximum swing of one dKH over the life of the experiment. My tank's average was really close to the set point of 7.8, coming out just so close at 7.76 dKH. Cross-referencing the tank's alkalinity with the amount of two-part dose as represented by the red line, you can see there is a clear upward trend in the red line over the experiment. This shows that my dosing started with the experiment at 107 ml per day and finish at 133 ml per day. The maximum peak of dosing was 149 ml. 
So essentially over the experiment, my tank saw a 25% increase in consumption of two part whilst maintaining a consistent DKH average of almost exactly 7.8 DKH with a maximum deviance from that of about half a DKH in either direction. The peak dosage of 149 mil was likely the result of the auto correction of the KH Lab Core 7 as it compensates based on a slight lag. Having six tests per day with which to calculate the dosing adjustment, there was an overcompensation to the upward consumption trend, which was then corrected back down to the final dosing set point of 133 mil. I know this because following the experiment, the tank consumption stabilized for about a week in the 130 to 135 mil range. However, I have no meaningful data to share beyond that, as at that point, I turned on my calcium reactor and that obviously threw a massive curveball in the dosing as it offset a huge portion of my dosing requirements. I'm super happy with the adaptability of the intelligent auto controlling of the KH Lab and Core 7. I think it's pretty impressive it was able to maintain the 7.8 DKH set point with an average of 7.76 DKH over the period of the experiment with the tank's changing consumption. So time for my conclusion about the Aquarium Systems Color Up program. Overall, I'm very happy with the result. I saw no negative effect, some subjective improvements to polyp extension, and some very compelling data that indicates a 25% increase in coral growth rate over the period of the program. At least, those were the results in my tank. So take these results as slightly better than anecdotal, but that's about as good as we usually can get in our hobby, unfortunately. I would encourage other people to run their own tests and record their results. The more people that do this, the more obvious the trend becomes and the more confident we can be in a method, product or result that can be expected. There are many other bacteria products on the market that would be awesome to test in a similar manner to the aquarium systems one I tested here, which is Dr. Tim Hovenak's bacterial strains packaged into this easy to follow program format. A new player in the Australian market, for example, is Reef Revolution. They have a blended bacterial product, which means it contains both nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria in a single product. Nitrifying being those that convert ammonia into nitrite into nitrate, and denitrifying being those that convert nitrate into nitrogen gas. Unlike many bacterial products on the market, Reef Revolution is very clear that the product should be refrigerated after opening. So keep that in mind and don't forget to put it back in the fridge when you're done. I've been told some of the bacteria strains present in the Reef Revolution ProBio product include heterotrophic bacteria, faculative bacteria and anaerobic bacteria like denitrifying bacillus. I'll let you do your own research into what each of those bacterial strains actually are because I'm no expert in that. This product is designed to be dosed daily at a rate of 2 drops per 100 litres. If you are interested in learning more about bacteria, I recently watched an excellent talk by Dr. Tim Hovnak at MACNA 2019, which I found extremely interesting. I'm gonna link that in the description below. So that's all for today. Let me know if you found this experiment interesting, and if you wanna see more of these types of two-part video series and semi-scientific style tests in the future, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to hear your ideas of what I can test and ways I can make my testing methodology better. Just bear in mind, I'm not a scientist and I've only got one tank to play with. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for new videos every week. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now. Hi everyone, just one more thing before you go and while you're watching this b-roll footage of some corals in my tank. Uh, as you might be aware, Australia is currently burning and there's bushfires everywhere. First time reefer David Meyer has organised in conjunction with Nature Aquariums in Whitehorse Road, Mont Albert in Victoria, Australia, a fundraising event to help raise funds for all of the brave Aussies on the front line battling our chaotic bushfires and for those that have lost everything they have. The event will be held on Sunday the 19th of January from 2pm till 6pm at Nature Aquariums. They'll get, there's going to be heaps of awesome goodies, raffles, prizes, some high-end items will also be auctioned on the day. Uh, and the auctions will be open for everyone across Australia to participate. If you're able to attend the event directly, there'll be non-alcoholic drinks and a sausage sizzle on the day, and all the money donated will go to charities to help out the bushfire victims. So if you can attend, 
or if you can donate, please dig deep uh, and, and help out. It's a really good cause. I'll put all the links and details of that in the description below. Thanks again. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.